Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Souk. Today we're going to be making Guernsey Gosh. And not just one Guernsey Gosh, but eight. We've got this nice little tray here that gives us eight mini Guernsey Goshes. They're perfect for just slicing up and having with a bit of uh, butter and toasted. They are lovely. This recipe has been tried and tested quite a few times and I think I've got it. So we're going to be making my recipe of Guernsey Gosh today. It's a little bit labour intensive, more so with the proving time, we've got to do a lot of waiting. Um, but I hope you'll bear with me and we can get going. Okay, so first things first, let's get all the ingredients out of the way. I've already weighed them all here and measured them all out and I'll just give you the list like usual just along the side as I'm going along. So first of all I've got 500 grams of strong white bread flour and I've also got in here a good pinch of salt and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Then I've got some melted butter which I've already melted, melted let it cool down a little bit so that's ready to go and that's 175 grams of Guernsey salted butter that I've used. We've also got one egg, um, one yeast packet which is about seven grams or about two teaspoons of yeast um, and I've also got four tablespoons of sugar here as well, caster sugar. Um, then I've got 150 millilitres of Guernsey milk, I've used red milk on this occasion but you can use blue, it's fine. And lastly I've got my 300 grams of sultanas or raisins and I've also got 50 grams of mixed peel in here as well. Okay so as I've mentioned already, I have already melted my butter and I've just let that cool a little bit so it's not piping hot. Um, and I've also warmed my milk to the point where I can still touch it, it's not going to burn me. Um, but it's just warm enough to get the yeast and sugar to react. Um, so first things first, we're going to pour this in together, give it a little stir and let the yeast activate. It'll take about five minutes and what you'll see is quite a distinction between the milk and the, the frothy yeast at the top. So let's pop that in there and give it a little mix. And we'll leave that for about five minutes just to let it activate. Okay, so our yeast is now activated. You can see it's gone a little bit throthy here, just on the top, and that's exactly what we want. So this comes the easy part. We're gonna throw in all of our wet ingredients to get them mixing, and then add half and half of the uh, flour. You notice I've got the dough hook on today. Um, this is because it's obviously a, a bready type substance, so it's gonna get a lot thicker, so we need something quite strong and sturdy. So let's get the yeast mix into the bowl. Make sure you get all of it out, because we don't wanna waste any of that goodness that's gonna help it rise. Okay, next we'll get in our butter. And lastly, one egg. Get that mix. Okay, I've literally just done that for about 10 seconds just so the egg is incorporated properly. And now we want to add our flour and our spices, so just about half of this. And let's give it a little mix here. Okay, so that does mix in rather quickly, so we'll just get the other lot in. Just like that. And now you want to get this mixing, you want to keep it going for about eight minutes. Uh, time it if you can, um, because it really does help it get all together and get it really doughy. Okay, so that's been about eight minutes. Now what we want to do is get this out onto the surface and you'll see it's in a nice big um, ball now and it'll just plonk out on its own and your bowl should be completely clean. Now this ball of dough here, it's gonna skip the fruit for the first uh, rise. There's two rises to the, pro the process. 
um, and we want to get this in a well oiled bowl so I've oiled this out already and you're just going to plunk this down in there and just lightly wrap it with cling film or even just throw over a towel put it somewhere that's nice and warm um, and we're going to leave that for about an hour and a half um, it should kind of double in size while the dough is doing its first rise we're just going to soak our fruit because the sultanas are quite dried out we just want to bring a little bit of life back into them so you get them nice and juicy when you have your Guernsey gosh at the end. So what we're going to do is just cover this with some hot water. We're going to leave that 45 minutes, so make sure to check back on it in 45 minutes. Just drain the water out and set it up to the side so it cools down in time for your dough. Right, so our dough has been proving for an hour and a half now um, and as you can see it's gotten a lot bigger and it's almost sort of cobwebby consistency when you pull it out. Um, what we'll do, I've got a lightly floured surface, I'm just going to pop this on the surface here and we're going to do what's called knocking it out which is basically just getting all the excess air out and just get, giving it a bit of a knead. Um, our next step is to add the sultanas or the fruit. Um, you should have taken it out of the hot water after 45 minutes um, and just give it a little squeeze to get all the excess water out because we don't want it too runny. And what we're going to do here is just add it bit by bit. Now with the Guernsey Gosh recipe it is quite heavy on the fruit so it's going to take a lot of effort to get it all in but just keep going. Um, get it all combined as much as you can. Um, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so our fruit's all incorporated there. Um, don't worry if the odd one or two bits come out, that's not a problem, and it's probably gonna happen like that. Um, what we're gonna do now, I've got a bench scraper or a dough slicer, but you can just use a knife. And now bear in mind, you can put this in your loaf tin and just make one, but I'm going to be making eight mini ones. So I'll pop this here. Now I've oiled these, well oiled these already. Um, and what we're going to do is just roll it into a long piece. Okay, and this I'm going to slice into my eight pieces. So we'll start in the middle. Just so they're roughly all the same size. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to flatten it out to kind of like a rectangle shape, roughly, and we're going to roll it up and this basically just hides your seam when it um, does the second rise. Okay, so we've got that seam at the bottom, that's going to go at the bottom of the pan and we're just going to fold down the edges, so tuck them underneath as well, just like that. So I'm going to do that with all of them. And then this is going to go for a second rise, it will be one hour and you should see them get to a nice size before we pop them in the oven. Okay, so let's get a towel on that, or again, uh, loosely cover it with cling film, or like I said, a towel. Get that in a warm place, or just stick it in front of your window so it's nice and warm, it's nice and sunny at the moment. Leave that for an hour, and then they should have puffed up beautifully and ready for the oven. That's the second rise all done, and they're starting to look like mini Guernsey goshes now. 
So the last thing we need to do before they go in the oven is just do a bit of egg wash. Now if you don't have any more egg, you can do this with milk as well and it will work perfectly. So just lightly cover them in a little bit of egg wash or milk. And it's just gonna give it that lovely golden brown co color when they come out the oven. Right, that's them all egg washed. So now it's gonna go in the oven for 20 minutes at 180 Celsius. See you in a minute. The gushers have not long come out the oven. I'm able to hold it because I've let them cool for about 10 minutes. And what I'm gonna do now is just pop them onto a wire rack so they can finish cooling. And they smell amazing, they're gonna taste amazing. Um, best way to enjoy these is toasted with a bit of butter. You can slice it up like a tiny little loaf. Um, and they are amazing. I really, really love these. Mmm, they smell so good. Okay, so let me pop them all out and I'll show you what they look like. There we have it, that's our Guernsey Goshers done and ready to eat. They look so cute, I love them in this little tiny form. You can do these in a big loaf as well, um, but I just like doing them like this and they're really good as like little favours or gifts as well. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.